Hello and welcome you all. Dear students, this topic is CMOS inverter. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. Draw and explain CMOS inverter. Also draw the transfer characteristics of uh, CMOS inverter. In this session, we will discuss the operation, the characteristics of CMOS inverter as well as we will study some non-ideal effects. So this is the circuit diagram of CMOS inverter. As the name indicates, it is inverter. That means if you apply high uh, input, output will be low. On the contrary, if we apply low input, output will be high. This is the inverter action which is uh, generated using a CMOS. So we are connecting two CMOS. One is M1 that is P MOSFET. Another is M2 that is N MOSFET. So P MOSFET and N MOSFET, M1 and M2 are connected one after other. From this end, we are applying input voltage V in, this is VDD. And at the output, this is the output voltage V0, at the output, we are connecting one capacitor. Now the operation is pretty simple. For the low input voltage, if you are applying low input voltage, then in that case, this P MOS will be on. Once this MOSFET is on, the voltage, supply voltage gets connected at the output. It will charge the capacitor because whenever you are applying low input voltage, M1 that is P MOS is on and M2 that is N MOS is switched off. Since it is off, there is direct connection between uh, sub input voltage and output is available. So it will charge the capacitor C. So in this case, the M1 is on, M2 is off and it will charge the capacitor C. Since output is available, the output will be logic high. Look at the condition, we are applying low input voltage. So after applying low input voltage, PMOS is getting switched on and at the output, you are getting a high voltage. This is inversion action. On the contrary, second case, for high input voltage, if you are applying high input voltage, then M1 reverse thing will happen m1 is off and m2 is on look at the diagram this m2 that is n mos is connected to the ground so whenever this is on the capacitor will get path to get discharged and discharging of capacitor will be through m2 so output will become zero that means whenever you are applying high input output become zero again this is the inverter action so this is the working of cmos inverter next is the transfer characteristics. It is graph of V out output voltage versus input voltage. The graph is divided into different regions. So in short, I have written uh, the conditions for each region. In region one, this region, <coughs> this is the region which is characterized by zero less than V in less than equals to VTH, where VTH is the threshold voltage. In that case, M2 is cut off. So this M2, that is N MOSFET, is switched off. M1 is in the linear mode. M1 is the is in the linear mode. So output is equals to VDD because this VDD is directly available at the output because M2 is off and M1 is in linear mode. Region B, this region, region B, in this case, M1 is in linear mode. Keep in mind, M1 is P MOSFET and M2 goes into saturation. So since M2 goes into saturation, M2 was earlier in the cutoff condition. So M2 goes into saturation, output voltage starts decreasing. In region C, both M1 and M2 are in saturation mode. Region C is this region. Both M1 and M2 are in saturation mode. Region D, in this region, M1 is in saturation and M2 is in linear mode. And region A, last region, so it is in this region M1 is off and M2 is in linear mode. That means <clears throat> M1, this P MOSFET is switched off and N MOSFET is switched on. So discharging of capacitor takes place. This is the transfer characteristics or graph of V out versus V in for CMOS inverter. Now we will discuss different effects related to MOSFET. First is channel length modulation. From the exam point of view, you may expect uh, few questions like this. Uh, describe channel length modulation in case of a MOSFET or what is the concept of uh, velocity modulation. So first is channel length modulation. As the name indicates, the length of a channel is changed due to certain conditions 
this is the channel length modulation actually in the saturation mode whenever mosfet transistor is in the saturation mode then the transistor acts as a perfect current source that means in that case ids where ids is the drain to source current remains constant since this current is constant the mosfet transistor acts as a constant current source and this value is not dependent on vds vds is drain to source voltage that means even if we vary uh, vds then also this ids remains constant so transistor is acting as a constant current source but practically it's not true in practical cases if we go on increasing drain to source voltage that means as vds increases the deflation region at the drain junction increases and effective channel length reduces actually there is one condition which is called a pinch off condition in that case as the vds goes on increasing this pinch off point this point i am talking about so this pinch off point gets shifted towards source terminal it will reduce down the effective length of a channel this particular thing in which uh, as we go on increasing vds the length of a channel decreases is called channel length modulation <clears throat> next is velocity saturation effect actually the velocity of a charged carrier this v stands for velocity velocity of a charged carrier is directly proportional to applied electric field this sign is directly proportional to or linearly proportional to e stands for applied electric field and the proportionality constant is mu where mu is the mobility mobility of a charged uh, carrier so velocity of a charged carrier is directly or linearly proportional to the applied electric field but there is a certain extent there is a certain limit see in this diagram this is the graph of vd velocity of a charged carrier versus electric field so ideally up to this point the value of uh, this velocity of charged carriers goes on increasing with increase in uh, value of electric field e but when this value of e reaches a certain limit that means this value is called critical value of electric field when it reaches a critical value then in case of a mosfet the velocity of a charged carrier does not increase beyond this point beyond which saturation c initially this velocity of a charged carrier in mosfet is changing with respect to electric field e on this uh, graph we are plotting on this axis we are plotting electric field this is velocity of a charged carrier it is changing linearly with e but this change happens only up to a certain limit that is critical value of electric field after that once this value of e electric field reaches ec that is critical value the velocity remains constant and this value is denoted by v saturation so when e reaches ec velocity of a charged carrier tends to saturate and because of which the value of mobility that is mu decreases in this case uh, in case of a mosfet the saturation velocity is approximately 10 raised to 7 centimeters per second next important concept is body effect usually if there are uh, similar types of MOSFETs, that means if there are only N type of MOSFETs or only P type of MOSFETs, then common substrate is used. That means these similar types of MOSFETs are fabricated by using a common substrate. So substrate voltage of each device remains same because uh, a common substrate is used. So substrate voltage remains same. But many times it is required to connect the MOSFET devices in series like this in this case vsb uh, stands for source to bulk bulk means substrate so vsb stands for source to substrate or source to bulk voltage for the lower transistor for the lower mosfet uh, this s1 terminal is directly connected to ground so vsb is ideally zero but as you move in upward direction this VSB is not equal to zero. That means the value of source to bulk, source to substrate voltage is not kept zero. It is changing. So in this case, this, as I said, uh, uh, if there are similar types of MOSFET, then a common substrate is used. And if we are using N type of MOSFET, uh, then <clears throat> the substrate is connected to the most negative terminal on that particular thing, on that particular circuit. 
the substrate voltage adds to the channel junction uh, potential. So as we move further, if there are, there is a series connection one above the other, then as we move further, the channel junction channel substrate junction potential increases because VSB is not zero, it increases gate channel voltage drop. <clears throat> Make the thing simple, remember it like this, since VSB is zero for the lower MOSFET, for the upper one it is not zero, likewise if there are n number of MOSFET devices then the value of VSB, VSB is source to a bulk or source to substrate voltage. Uh, will go on changing. So net effect is there is a change in VTH where VTH is the threshold voltage. That means the threshold voltage increases due to the non-zero value of VSB. This change of VTH threshold voltage with respect to VSB that is source to bulk or source to substrate voltage is called body effect of a MOSFET. The next effect is hot electron effect. It is basically an effect in which the electrons gains high kinetic energy because of which they penetrates, enters into the oxide layer of a structure and it may damage the entire IC. This effect is hot electron effect. Under normal circumstances, that means uh, in case of uh, normal thermal equilibrium conditions, both electrons and holes absorbs as well as emits photons continuously. That means if there is a thermal equilibrium condition, then both electrons and holes are uh, absorbing energy levels as well as emitting energy levels. So the net kinetic energy is uh, gain in the kinetic energy, average gain in the kinetic energy remains zero. But if there is a presence of E, that is electric field intensity, then kinetic energy increases. The velocity of a charged carrier increases. This upward arrow indicates value is increasing. The velocity of the carriers increases as electric field E increases. The typical value is 100 kilo ohm per centimeter. If the value of electric field, applied electric field reaches typically up to 100 kilo ohm per centimeter, then the carriers that is electrons or holes will not remain in the thermal equilibrium conditions. These carriers causes impact ionization. This is one concept in which uh, number of more number of electron and hole spares are generated. It it is also called avalanche multiplication. So existing electron and holes causes impact ionization with the latter structure, which produces more and more number of electrons and holes. These carriers injects in the oxide layer and may damage the IC. These carriers are called hot carriers, and this is the hot electron effect. Now to uh, obtain the protection from such hot electron effect. <clears throat> One obvious solution is reduce electric field at the junc drain junction. To reduce the electric field at the drain junction, first option is to change the doping concentration, to lower down the doping concentration at the drain junction or use additional MOSFET in a series with the actual MOSFET which is going to get affected so that the total voltage gets distributed among the two MOSFETs. So this is about the hot electron effect. So dear students, that's it for today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.